All right, we are back with more Assassin's Creed 2 book versus the game, and we are in for a doozy of a story. So let's go ahead and get into it more with the Potsy Conspiracy. Last time we checked in, Etsy went up shaking this dude like they two prisoners in a prison block. Then this dude has the audacity to, to shout out his name, letting everybody know who it is. And then Ezio straight robs him. He straight robs him. In the book, he actually takes his wallet, everything that's in it, because Alberto actually tells him that he carried all the papers that Ezio actually gave him in the first part before the trial. They're actually on him. Ezio took all of them, his money, and everything else on him. So not only did he take them, he robbed them. The thing I did forget to mention in the previous video is actually Ezio went to go to Christina and tell them and tell her the news of what happened. She pretty much tells him what happened to his parents' bodies. And they're about to actually be dumped in a ditch. Ezio asks if, he, uh, if she wants to come with him. She eventually ends up saying no because she can't leave the family. So pretty much this whole storyline between her and him is actually covered in AC2. So all the Christina missions that are mentioned in Brotherhood are actually in this book. They're mentioned in canon in the book. So after that ends up happening, he goes back to Paola's and pretty much tells her the exact same thing he says in the game. Like, we got to get out of here. You know, they looking after me. Like, it's, it's going to be another time for SWAT shows up. Actually, in the game, you have to go down, take down posters, you know, uh, bribe a couple of the heralds before you can actually leave. The girls actually end up doing this for Ezio in the book. So he actually doesn't go do it. He just ends up waiting a day while this is happening so he can actually leave. Storyline like, continues the same as when, when he tells Claudia what, what happened. She's pretty much in shock. Maria doesn't have any reaction at all she pretty much knew this was going to happen and she's pretty much just still in shock of everything that's happened already Paola then gives them some disguises and some fake ids so they can actually leave florence unnoticed Exo actually does not leave the city in his robes he actually changes to a whole new different attire so that he's not noticed earning from florence to his, his uncle's house is actually pretty miserable because they're pretty much sleeping and living on the road. They're taking baths and ponds. They're drinking from that same water. And they're just eating cheese and old stale wine. It's a hard night life, y'all. When they finally get there, when the destination is in sight, this little boil right here ends up blocking their path. He's talking to Ezio like they're two lost friends. And he just left Firenze without saying goodbye to him. Really? Dude has like a dozen guards with him, all carrying like swords, spears, and halberds. His dad just got out of jail, so he pretty much just gave uh, Vieri all this money and for this expedition to go take out Ezio. Does he use these guards? No. Does he try to ambush Ezio like someone smart would do? No. This dude challenges him to a fist fight and gets his ass clean knocked out in the first round. The very first round. So just in case he doesn't look like a bitch in front of his boys, he actually sends all the men to actually try and take Ezio out. Ezio has his mom and his sister pretty much like right behind him because he pretty much only has his sword, and that's it. And he has to fight all these guys. He's pretty much outnumbered. It don't. It's looking grim. It's looking grim. Who should show up but me? It's a matter, y'all. I'm sorry. As Oka Mario ends up showing up, and the description of the fight is insane. They pretty much take out half of his group with throwing knives that are so deep when they hit them, they're to the hilt. That's how fast and how hard he's throwing them. He actually disarms Vieri and breaks his sword over his knee. Yeah. Vieri ends up ducking out and leaving, and Mario's like, you don't recognize me? It's me. I'm Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm sorry. Goes up and gives uh, Ezio a big ass hug, and he walks over to Claudia and his uh, to, and to Maria, and he he tells him like, "Hey, I'm gonna take Ezio with me to the villa. I'm gonna leave my men here, and we're gonna bring you into the town much later." What actually ends up happening is they don't even go to the the villa. Maria and Claudia never live in the villa until much much later. They end up living in an abbey where they are actually watched over by some nuns. So this scene in the book right here never actually happened. They never actually lived there. The only people who lived in the villa were Ezio and his uncle. Events began to uh, simply go the same as they do in the game. Pretty much uh, his uncle ends up training him, telling him about a little bit about his heritage. It pretty much goes the same. Except now we know some of the, um, the, the mercenaries that work with Mario because Ezio becomes really close with one and actually begins to help train him. So after months of training... Ezio is finally into this kick-ass machine of an assassin that we all know and love. And he thanks his uncle and tells him, like, Uncle, love you. Thank you for all your help. But I'm out of here. Deuce. Now, the reactions that you see in the game, the reactions you see in the book are, are sort of different, but they're sort of the same. 
His uncle is visibly upset in the game, but his uncle is 10 times as upset in the book because he's he's irate that he's been training Ezio all this time and that he just wants to leave. So he's actually morally actually upset and they actually have, they're staying in the villa and they're not speaking to each other because of this. He actually goes to visit his mother and sister and his sister actually is going to be coming, um, is considering taking the vows to become a nun in the, um, in the monastery, which Ezio is a little like, about but um his mother is pretty much she's 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 still in shock but she's accommodating to her new surroundings so ho hopefully he says to himself that she will um you know come around when he returns back to the villa he finds out that his uncle is going off to San Giamo to uh, go fight Bieri. he doesn't actually meet him there he actually meets him at the stables in front of Monterey Maggioni as they're getting ready to leave to the place so they ride to this location together him and Uncle Mario come up with a plan to actually take some Giamo and actually it's the same one in the game, but um, his uncle gives him some men to actually help him out. The men actually are very hesitant to follow Ezio and take orders from him because he's so young and inexperienced. But they trust Mario and therefore they follow him, especially the guy who actually uh, helped train him. As the battle begins to start, um, Uncle Mario actually tells uh, Ezio to go find Vieri and take him out. As is happening, you see the meeting with the Templars here. And the meeting pretty much goes the exact same way. Foul words, cursing the family, you know, pretty much. And then Rodrigo, uh, Francesco, and Jacopo end up leaving on horseback to, uh, to head to Florence to go plan the rest of the conspiracy. Everything pretty much stays the exact same way. Until... C.O. and Vieri have one final fight like two Crips and Bloods on a Saturday night. Vieri actually almost beats Ezio in the book. He actually... Almost beats him. It's a very close match. Ezio ends up catching him off guard with his hidden blade and stopping him. And then surprisingly, Vieri actually says like, you know, in another life, we could have been best friends. And then ends up just straight dying. The scene is actually still the same in the game and the game as in the book. He ends up cursing out Vieri and basically tells him to go to hell. You piece of, yeah. But what ends up happening is Mario actually stops Ezio like he does in the game. But he, you know, gives Vieri his last rites. And then he actually is visibly upset with Ezio when this happens. And then they actually have to go and actually finish the fight. The fight's not over. They still have to, they have another day of fighting to actually capture San Giamo and actually let things uh, come. They get back to Monteregioni. He's actually extremely upset with Ezio for losing control and not um, wanting him to indulge in, in, um, in, in, uh, in killing because he wants him to understand, like, just because, you know, just because they're bad people does not mean they don't have respect, last rights, and everything like that. You have to learn to control your impulses. And he's actually, they actually get into a bit of it. And then his uncle, you know, pulls the rank card and he's like, look, I'm your uncle, but I stand as your guardian now. So, like, listen to me. And essentially goes is like he stands up and Ezio just feels this power radiating from him. And he's like, you know what? He's right. I'll stop. He then heads back to, once they get back to Monterey, Johnny, him and his uncle talk a little bit more. And then they finally decide, Ezio finally decides to go back to Florence to go stop the conspiracy from happening. We reached the end of our tale for today. Follow for part four, the Posse Conspiracy, part three.